Yeah. So the next speaker is Eugene Wong, Wong, who will be presenting a case of anaplastic Kaposi sarcoma. Hi, uh, good, um, good afternoon. My name's um, Dr. Ong, and I'm presenting a case of an aggressive variant of Kaposi sarcoma. Uh, so this was an 83-year-old gentleman who, uh, from Morocco who presented with classic Kaposi sarcoma, non-HIV or immunosuppression-related back in 2008. And this was on a background of lymphedema, as we can see here. He... Um, as you can see here, he has a number of um, lymphedema with a number of hyperpigmented uh, patches and plaques and nodules on his lower legs. And he'd been having this for a number of years and been treated with multiple courses of radiotherapy as well as an in interferon alpha immunotherapy. A biopsy was taken one of these lesions and showed classic features of a nodular KS. Here we have the extravasate erythrocytes in yellow with a spin background spindle cell proliferation and slit-like vascular channels. And on a higher mag magnification, we can see these more clearly. There are also some eosinophilic hyaline globules, which are more specific features of Kaposi sarcoma, and you often get those in plaque and nodular stage KS, as well as a plasma cell infiltrate in other areas of the biopsy. HHV8 staining showed this to be confirm our suspicion of a Kaposi sarcoma. Um, then more recently, back in December, this, uh, December last year, he developed a rapidly growing nodule on the back of his left leg, which grew rapidly and was very different from his usual Kaposi sarcoma. This grew over the course of four to six weeks, uh, was painful, was ulcerated, and what the picture doesn't really, you can't really appreciate from the picture is that it was very raised as well. And this was at a site of previous radiotherapy. And on higher magnification, this was a raised nodular lesion that was ulcerated and very tender to touch. So our differential diagnosis was whether this was uh, SCC given his previous radiotherapy uh, or a nodular, a nodular KS lesion an angiosarcoma, given the lymphedema and radiotherapy, trauma or infection. A punch biopsy showed the ulceration and underlying necrosis with a, uh, on a low power, you can see a dense proliferation. And as we go to a higher power, we can see this proliferation in, in, in more detail. Uh, we can see the cells are pleomorphic. There are a number of angulated hyperchromatic cells and numerous mitotic figures that are circled there in red. There's a background plasma cell infiltrate as well, and as we can see in another section, we can see marked pleomorphism, which is unusual for a nodular KS lesion. Again, we see these, however, quite specific features of KS, the eosinophilic hyaline globules, which are, are um, represent digested or partially digested erythrocytes and are quite specific in the literature to KS and HHV8 confirmed this positivity. So therefore the diagnosis given the pleomorphism and the atypical mito mitotic figures of an anaplastic Kaposi sarcoma was made, um, which as you can see side by side from the nodular case has those differences of the marked pleomorphism and atypia of cells that is not present in the nodular case which has more bland cells. So anaplastic KS is a highly aggressive form of KS, it's very rare, um, deeply invasive, and does pose a metastatic risk to patients. Here's um, a list I compiled of the cases of anaplastic KS and their, and, and, and their characteristics. As you can see, it occurs in different forms of KS uh, and uh, generally, as we can see, in these cases, it tends to occur in older patients. So these patients are up to 85 years, and the youngest is 50 years old. And it tends to occur in patients that have had 
KS for a number of years before the development of an anaplastic KS lesion. As you can see here, many of these patients have had KS for up to 34 years in, this, uh, in one of these cases. The vast majority have lymphedema, uh, a background of lymphedema, and the treatment, this is treatment prior to, for their original KS, prior to the development of a anaplastic KS. Uh, we can see here, um, the majority of these patients have had radiotherapy where that's recorded. And in terms of their anaplastic KS, a number of different treatment modalities have been tried with these um, patients, including radiotherapy, chemotherapy, even more extreme measures of surgery, such as even amputation. And despite all this, we can see from the outcome measures that a lot of these cases um, pass away quite rapidly. So this is a very serious, um, life-threatening condition. So these are the factors given the, that have been drawn out from cases and case series like these um, that show the factors promoting anaplastic transformation are long-standing KS, lymph, background of lymphedema. Most of these patients have had previous radiotherapy, and many of these patients have been immunosuppressed beforehand. Uh, so our patient was treated with 30 grays of radiotherapy over 15 fractions. Um, these are the before and then one man, month after treatment pictures. Um, and in the picture on the right-hand side, you can see post-radiotherapy changes to the skin and radiotherapy-related ulceration. Um, so in summary, we've presented a case of an anaplastic Kaposi sarcoma, um, presenting as a rapidly growing nodule, very painful, ulcerated, with this atypical histology that has an aggressive course and it's something to think about in patients with long-standing KS. Thank you. Thank you.